Many of today's major food crops are distributed around the world. Although modern trade networks are responsible for much of the food globalization, it has its roots in prehistory. One of the key episodes in the history of food globalization is the period between 7,000 and 3,500 years ago. During this time, crops such as wheat and barley moved eastward from their origins in southwestern Asia to prehistoric China. Meanwhile, broom corn and foxtail millet originated in East Asia and moved from China in the opposite direction, to the west. Across Eurasia, there are deeply embedded differences between east and west when it comes to cooking with these crops. In the east, grains are boiled and steamed, whilst in the west, grinding and baking the resulting flour is the predominant method used. Scholars have speculated that these different cooking techniques are even older than agricultural practices predating the domestications of plants and animals by thousands of years. So what happened when grains like wheat and barley, which are rooted in the grinding and baking tradition, entered regions where boiling and steaming were preferred? A new study which analysed the stable isotope compositions of human and animal bones recovered from sites across China showed that in the east of the country, where smaller grains like millet were easier to cook using traditional boiling and steaming methods, the adoption of larger grains like wheat and barley was much slower than it was in the West, where grinding and baking were preferred. Another study suggests that the introduction of wheat and barley into China likely involved prehistoric farmers selecting crops with shorter, more compact grains, in order to cook them in the same way as they cooked millet meals, by boiling and steaming, for thousands of years before the introduction of the Western crops. These studies show that grains and cuisines were likely decoupled, so that whilst wheat and barley travelled into eastern China 4,000 years ago, grinding and baking did not. Similarly, whilst millet travelled into the west, the sticky starch genotypes less suitable for grinding and baking did not, nor did the eastern cuisine characterised by boiling and steaming, as suggested by recent studies. But as well as fulfilling biological needs, food also fulfils cultural, social and emotional needs and this would have been another major influence on the uptake of new crops in prehistoric times. While crops moved across geographical boundaries, their communicative and expressive aspects were also transformed within the existing social and cultural systems, according to local customs, in much the same way as happens today.